So the task tonight is to ask the question of whether Orthodox women can be rabbis. Can Orthodox women be rabbis? So before we answer that question, we first have to figure out what the role of a rabbi is. So just shout out, what is the role of a rabbi? What does a rabbi do? A rabbi is a teacher. What else? A rabbi? I didn't hear. Give speeches. Spiritual advisor, halachic decisor, performs weddings. Gets blamed for everything that goes wrong. Absolutely gets blamed for everything that goes wrong. That goes without saying. What else? Life cycle events, birth through death. Lead some services, guidance, spiritual guidance, pastoral guidance. You know, nobody told me that when I started <laughs> fundraising. I wish, I wish somebody had said that. <laughs> um, yes. So of these things, teacher, uh, teacher, pastoral guide, uh, halachic decisor, leading uh, services, life cycle events, what of those things can a woman not perform? So that's really what I wanted to examine tonight. Are there limitations? Are there halachic uh, limitations through Jewish law that prevent women from assuming a position of rabbinic leadership. You have some source sheets in front of you. We'll, we'll look a little bit at source sheets. We'll do some inside, some outside, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have an opportunity to learn together and also to parse out and discuss some of the larger issues as well. So our first question we want to know is if rabbi is a teacher, if the role of a rabbi is a teacher, the first question we want to know is can a woman be in the position of learning text? Can a woman learn Torah? Now, for us, this question is almost passe, right? We live in a modern Orthodox community, uh, a community now where, where women have wide access to learning Talmud on a high level and learning Halakha on a, a high level. But this is, 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 people are shaking their heads, maybe not on a high level here, but it's, it's accessible in Israel and in New York. It's possible, but this phenomenon is actually quite new. Um, it wasn't until, until much recently that women were able to learn. And the reason is, is if you look at the first source, you look at Maimonides living in the, the 12th century as an example of, of many rabbis who, who uh, wanted to try to limit women's ability to learn Torah. So Rambam says that a woman can study Torah, but, but, she, but she's not really commanded to study Torah. And he goes on to say that even though she merits reward, the rabbis commanded that a man not teach his daughter Torah. Why? Because most women's cognitive skills are not directed towards proper learning, and they corrupt the words of Torah into nonsense. The Hebrew word is into tiflut. And therefore, she, she's not able to, to, to take in the, the Torah on a high level. Now, this idea was prevalent in the 12th century. After all, women weren't really in the public space. Women were, were stayed at home. And, and they didn't need to, to learn um, Torah on, on, forget a high level, in, in any way. Um, however, if you look at some of the, the if you look at, 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 at just a, a brash of history, there's always women who have found ways to learn. One primary example, of course, is Berea. So in the Talmud, in uh, source number two, as an example, we have one of the Talmudic fig figures, Berea, who uh, it's known about her that she would learn the men under the table. She would learn 300 laws in one day um, compared to her male colleagues. And so women in various places and ways were able to take in knowledge. The truth is, despite that there were women here and there who were able to, to learn, it wasn't really until, the, until 1917 in Krakow where the Chavetz Chaim um, put his imprimatur, his stamp of approval, on, uh, on uh, um, opening up the schools of Beit Yaakov, right? Um, led by Sarah Schneer, who, who revolutionized the ability of women to begin learning outside of the home. And so 
Um, and so, in fact, today the Beit Yaakov movement, of course, still exists. Perhaps we don't associate it with, with women, uh, um, uh, with, with, with the word revolutionary and women being able to, to learn text on a, on a, a high level. Um, but it, it, it was the first time that, that formal texts were taught to women outside of the home. And today, as time marched on, um, and as women began to thirst more and more for Torah knowledge, there are many ways to access text. So for example, in Israel, there are many wonderful institutions of higher learning, much of which I benefited from, like Midrashat Lindenbaum and Mishmat and Pardes. Um, in New York, there's, there's Drisha. Um, and so women can pursue learning not only just uh, Tanakh, but learning Gemara, Talmud, and, and Halakha. So the question really becomes, now that we know that it's possible for women to be able to learn Torah, can they use that Torah knowledge? Can they take that Torah knowledge and use it to become poskot, use it to become legal decisors? So that was one of the roles of the rabbi that was shouted out before. And perhaps well, this is one of the more controversial questions is, can a woman be in a position of, of halachic authority? So a point of departure, if you look at your sheets on page two, source number three, um, the question is really about whether a woman can act as a, a witness. Um, the, 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 the Talmud states in Nida, kol hakashela don kashela e, that if a person, if a man in this case, is able to act as a judge, to be in judgment over others, which is a legal way of saying a judge of law, um, can she, if you can be a, a judge, you can be a witness. Now, it says elsewhere that women cannot be a witness. A woman cannot be an aide. A woman cannot witness at a chuppah, for example, to, to uh, um, when a witnesses are, are called up, when the aide are called up, a woman is not, is not able to be a, an, an aide. And therefore, maybe she cannot be an authority on law. So our counterpoint to this, this question, of course, is Devara. Right, so what, is, what was Devara's role in Navi, in the Book of Judges? So if you look at source number four, Udvara isha nevi'a eshet lapidot hi shavta Israel be'et hahi v'hi yoshevet tachat tomar Devara ben harama ovein beit al bahar Ephraim v'yalu aleha b'nei Israel l'mishpat. And Devara prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, judged Israel at that time and she lived under the palm tree of Devara between Ramah and Beit El in Mount Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment, came up to her to, to give over Mishpatim teachings and, and its seemingly legal advice. So if you were a rabbi um, parsing out what this text means, um, put yourself in the Beit Midrash, into the study hall in the, in, in the time of the Gemara. Um, how would you explain Devara's acceptance as a prophetess, as, or, or rather as a judge and teacher? How would you explain that Devara um, was, was allowed to be a judge? Maybe, as is done in a Beit Midrash, you would either defend her role, or you would denigrate her and say, perhaps, that she is an exception to the rule. So what might some, some arguments be made for how it is that Devara um, was able to judge the people. What are some ideas? Yes? So maybe, maybe Devar, there was nobody else who was eligible at the time, and so, and so God picked her, God picked Devara to be in a position of judging, of judging. Okay, what else? What might another argument be? Yeah, she was picked by God to be a prophetess, and that was, you know, there weren't many prophetesses walking around or, or prophets, and so if you're picked by God to be a prophetess, it would make sense that you would have the ability to, this leadership ability to be in judgment over others and to give legal advice to others. Yes? Maybe she was charismatic and wise and uh, beloved. Maybe she was the right person for the job, right? It wasn't that there was nobody else around, but she was a leader in the true sense. She was learned. She, she knew her stuff. She knew halakha. She knew text. And, and she was the right person for the job. What else? <laughs> 
Sharon, yeah. The people came to her. The people came to her. So maybe she was in this position because there was acceptance among community for her role. Right, and that goes along with being the right person for the job. There was some characteristic within her that allowed her to be fair. Um, wouldn't that be lovely <laughs> in our world? Um, so the rabbis are, are, are doing exactly what we're doing and trying to figure out why, how could it be? Can Devar be held up as a precedent for us to allow women to follow in her footsteps and be legal decisors, or is she an exception to the rule? And much of what you said ha ha have been suggested by Tosafot, by some of the, uh, the early um, rabbis, either Devara was an exception to the rule because the text says Be'etahi, she was picked only at that time. It was, she was relevant and a leader only at that moment, and therefore we cannot we cannot use her as a precedent for other women to continue in her footsteps. Or perhaps Devara was picked because the community accepted her. And if the community accepts uh, her leadership, then maybe other women who are accepted by the com community can also be in a position of judging others. Right? And, and a few other in between, because God picked her, and that's why she was allowed to, to, to sit in judgment. Um, some rabbi said, actually, she didn't actually judge. She only taught. She was a milamedet. Not that there's anything wrong with being a milamedet, but a, a, a teacher, but sort of um, downgrading her ability to, to be in a position of leadership as, as just somebody who was teaching the, the laws. Um, so this conversation is continued uh, by, if you look, turn to page, to, to page three, source seven and eight. <coughs> This question was taken up by the, the Sefer Hachinoch in the 13th century in Spain, a anonymous uh, author who is discussing the question about whether a Kohen can enter a, the Beit HaMikdash if, they are, if he is drunk, right? If he is, is, has, uh, has drunk wine or strong drink, can he perform uh, ritual in the, the Beit HaMikdash? And the Sefer Achinoch, I, I love the source, uses this as a opportunity to say, well, actually, um, people who are drunk should not be able to perform ritual. And that includes when the Beit HaMikdash was, uh, was built and after it has, been destruct it has been destroyed. And in fact, it applies to men and women. So that if a woman was a hora'a, was in a position of leadership and was a chachma and knew that she knew her her. her Stuff was wise if she had not been drinking she'd be fit to render a ruling she would be in a, a, a the language is she would be in a position of of hara'a um, and so too says the 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 birke yosef um, rabbi chaim yosef um, azulai in uh, in also in the 18th century um, comments and says that's, that it's true that if a woman is in a, a position of chachma, if she's able to understand law and she's, she's spent many years studying, she can be in a position to, to give rulings. She can be a poseket. She can be a decisor over Jewish law.